So I'm officially starting my own startup journey where I'm gonna be building here in this channel a solo SaaS startup from scratch. And I'm gonna try to detail every step of the way as much as I can of the tools I'm using and why I'm doing things the way I am and about, of course, about the idea and stuff like that. If you wanna be part of the journey, be sure to subscribe to the channel and feel free to give suggestions and opinions in the comment section down below. They are more than welcome and I'm gonna be reading each one of them. So let's get straight into it. I'm actually in the idea validation part of the process. I don't know how much you know about building a startup, but a lot of times people just have an idea and they start trying to build it. And after they built it, they are gonna try to find someone that wants to use it and that maybe wants to pay something for the service. But this way is actually not very recommended because people just might build things that no one wants to use, no one wants to pay something for it. So usually a best practice on building a startup is to start with the idea validation part of the process. And there are many ways to try to validate your idea. The way I'm trying to do it is by building a landing page for it. So I can gather people that actually wants to use it in a waiting list. So here what you see on the screen is actually the Figma file that I use to design the landing page. Usually before this, I would try to design the page while coding, but this time I tried something different. I tried to make the design on Figma before coding anything. And actually I just learned Figma. I watched a video tutorial of about 30 minutes on YouTube just to learn the very basics and be able to build this landing page. And I gotta say, I feel that building the design before actually coding made a lot of difference. It's a lot more efficient in trying to build something a lot better before jumping into the coding part of the process. So I think I'm gonna be doing this from now on just designing first and coding later. And just for fun, I also tried to use another service that's called Smashing Logo, where an AI designer can build your logo for you in seconds. You just type the name of the service and like the design styles you like, a bunch of things that you can select there, and it will generate the design of a bunch of logos and you can choose one you like, buy it and use it on your project. This one is my favorite and they almost made me buy it. They do a very good job in showing how the logo is gonna look in a, a bunch of different scenarios. In a notebook or in a shirt or in a lot of other places. And looking at that almost made me wanna buy it. But I held myself and I am gonna buy it if I feel that the idea is validated. What do you think? Do you think this logo is worth it? It does cost about $100 so I don't wanna spend that money before the idea is validated. For now I'm just gonna stick with having no logo. So yeah, going back to the idea validation here, before I actually talk about the idea, let me tell you what I'm doing to try to validate the idea. So there is this action button here on the landing page that allows users to join the waiting list if they actually like the product. So if the user is willing to put their email address to join the waiting list, this by itself kind of works as an idea validation. But sometimes this is not enough because even if the person likes the product and joins the waiting list, it doesn't mean that that person is gonna be willing to pay for the product. So what I did here was that I added a checkbox to the landing page that will allow users to pay in advance a one-time fee to get a lifetime benefit in the product. In this case, more free storage. If some people decide to pay the $5 for the benefit, this will serve as a very good validation for the idea. So now let's talk about the idea itself. The idea is targeted for developers who are building apps that handles images in some way. So it is an image service that can make handling images inside an app very easy and efficient. Right now what I usually do when I need to handle images inside an app and what I think most people are doing is to use Amazon S3. And to do that, you need to have an AWS account that requires a credit card and just this is already a pain for a lot of people. And if you have the account and you want to do it the most simple way possible, you're probably gonna try to create a public S3 bucket so that you can access and upload images directly from your app without any problems. Or you could use the AWS SDK from inside your API and try to do everything from there. But all of these things are not very good for production. When you're ready to move to production, you might wanna do things like make the S3 bucket private, add a CloudFront distribution to your S3 bucket so that you can cache your images on the edge and have your users be able to access them with performance. Use pre-signed URLs to control who can access and who can upload images to your bucket. And sometimes use Lambda Edge if you wanna do some pre-processing close to your user instead of using an API, for example. And this whole process can be quite complex and can take quite a lot of time. So the service I want to make is a service that can facilitate all of this. All of that AWS infrastructure that I just talked about, 
would be available in the service out of the box and you would also have an easy way to configure permissions to who can download and who can upload your images and stuff like that. And the service would also include an SDK that you could use inside your Node.js project to abstract all of the complex logic you need to like upload images and stuff like that. I also want to make it possible for the image to be resized on download on the edge by using Lambda Edge with CloudFront. And finally, I would also have a React component that would make it easy to create image inputs for your project. And yeah, that's the base of the idea. I'm no designer and I'm no copywriter, so there are a lot of things that can be improved here on this landing page. And I actually just read a book that it's called Building a Story Brand by Donald Miller. And in this book, he teaches a very interesting framework to clarify your message and make potential customers understand clearly what your product does. I'm probably going to try to use this framework soon to improve the text on this landing page. But at some point, I'll probably just go to Fiverr and get professional help from someone more capable than me on this topic. But yeah, another thing we need to talk about is how am I going to make money with this startup? I haven't completely figured out the plans and the pricing yet, but I will give you a rough image of what I'm planning right now. So I want the app to have a free plan, a completely free plan that has enough storage for you to build at least two or three small projects. And then I will have a pro plan where you could pay like $20 every month plus an on-demand storage usage so that the more you use the more you pay. And I'm also thinking on having like an enterprise plan because I think that some companies might need to have the data inside their own AWS account and on this enterprise plan they will have an option to pay a one-time fee so that I can build all the infrastructure inside their AWS account and link it to the service so that they can use all the features of the service and at the same time have their own data inside their own AWS account. So yeah, basically this is what I'm thinking right now. Okay, this is all for the idea. Now let me show you what I already have ready right now. The landing page is coded and deployed. I used Next.js to do it and I deployed it to Vercel. For the email subscription part, I used MailerLite, which is an email marketing service that you can start for free. I'm not sure if I'm gonna stick with it on the long run, but for now, I'm just going to use it. If I ever want to change to another one, I can always export all the emails and import it to another service. And of course, I also configured Google Analytics so that I can see everyone that's coming to my site and the conversion rate as well. To be honest, Next.js is probably not the best choice here because this is an aesthetic page. So probably something like Astro Build would be a better choice. But actually, what I want to do in the future is to learn a no-code web page builder like Webflow to make my landing pages a lot easier and also being able to maintain them a lot easier. So yeah, the landing page is already out and the link is in the description if you want to check it out. So now I'm going to share the next steps that I'm thinking on taking on this startup. And the first thing that I want to do is to focus on lead generation. This YouTube video itself is one of the lead generators that I'm building because people that come here might be interested in the product and they might check out the website and join the waiting list. I'm also going to post it, of course, in all of my other places like Twitter and my Hashnode blog and stuff like that. But I also want to search for where those potential users actually are. What I'm thinking right now is to try to post something on Indie Hackers and Hacker News. Both are platforms where a lot of developers and startup founders gather to share information and show what they're building and to ask people for feedback. And yeah, after I feel that the idea is validated, I'm gonna start building the MVP, which is the minimum viable product, and then try to get some people from the waiting list to try out the service and give me feedback on it. I also wanna try to collaborate with some other content creators. Just imagine how it would be if Theo would give us a rant about our service. I don't know when I'll be able to reach those people, but I'm gonna try it anyway. And of course, I'm gonna keep building this community and I'm also gonna be using the service myself to make projects here in the channel that will serve as a tutorial and at the same time it will also promote the service itself. Yeah, and there are things that I haven't completely figured out yet, like when to register the company and the other legal stuff like terms of service and stuff like that. And another thing that you might be wondering is about capital investment. And to be honest, I'm not thinking about taking an outside investment. When people hear about startup, a lot of people think about this default way of going that you have a co-founder and then you validate your idea and then you build an MVP and gather some initial users, then you pitch it to an investor and you get investment and you use that money to try to focus on fast growth even if you lose money at first. And then finally, if you have a successful startup, you get acquired or you try to focus on profitability and try to become a publicly traded company, what people call IPO. 
But one thing some people don't know is that there are other ways of building a startup. The way I want to build it is to build a completely solo startup where I have full autonomy in the process and without outside investment. I want to try to aim for profitability from the start. And actually this way of building a company is well explained on a book called Company of One by Paul Jarvis. This book was recommended to me by Tyron from the Dev Epo channel. By the way, thank you a lot Tyron, this was a very awesome read. So yeah, there are other people actually building companies this way, without focusing on fast growth, and actually saying that this is a very good way to do it. In fact, there is another book that I have read before that's called Start Small, Stay Small by Rob Walling that have a very similar point of view on building a company. So as of right now, this is the way I want to try to build my startup. But who knows, I might change my mind in the future. I always like a next challenge. By the way, I don't want to give you the impression that I'm an expert on the subject because this is my first startup. I am a complete beginner. All I know is from the many books and videos that I've been consuming lately. So I have no actual experience on building a startup yet. I'll be learning with you guys along the way and there will probably be some failures ahead, but I'm not gonna give up anytime soon. I strongly believe that if I take one step every day, I will eventually get closer to where I wanna go. So yeah, that will be it for the video. If you wanna join my startup journey, be sure to subscribe to the channel and give it a thumbs up if you liked it. I'll see you next time. Matane!